Hey guys, welcome to the wild side. And this week we have a guest that you know, sometimes is pretty good at playing dead, a Virginia opossum. So come, take a walk on the wild side of the opossum. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of The Wild Side, where we are talking about the Virginia opossum. Take a look at this. This is Poppy, and she's from a San Antonio-based nonprofit organization called Zoo Imagination. And Poppy was actually rescued in Waco, Texas at a very, very young age. In fact, a young opossum spends a lot of time in the trees, avoiding its predators, and using this very, very uh, prehensile tail to hang on to everything. At this size and this age, nearly three years old, Poppy doesn't, can't really support her own weight on this tail anymore. So at this age, if you see a possum in your backyard, you're going to see them under your house, in your garden, maybe near your garage, avoiding ways of climbing because then they're probably going to fall, especially at this size. Now I say at this age, three doesn't sound like a very big number. Well, for an opossum it is. In fact, they only have a lifespan of about two to three years. Very rarely do you see an opossum go past that three-year-old range. Now, this is a very unique species to us here in the United States. You can find them from the East Coast to the West Coast, from Canada down here into uh, well, Central America. This is the only native marsupial to North America. And when I say marsupial, that's right. I'm talking about kangaroos, wallabies, uh, koalas, things of that nature. But the opossum is a marsupial. That means they're young or born, not fully developed, and then they grow up inside of a pouch. Now with an opossum, it's different. Uh, these animals are born, they go into the pouch and develop, but then instead of spending a lot of time hopping around away from mom like a kangaroo, they spend a lot of time grabbing onto mom's back. And that's kind of uh, probably where Poppy uh, was in the development stage of her life when she was rescued. She was found in Waco, Texas, her mother hit by a car. That happens very frequently here in the state of Texas. Zoo Imagination's given her an amazing, amazing home. Now marsupials all over the world, uh, people are synonymous with the red kangaroo or the wallaby, but there are possums in different parts of the world. There are possums in South America and in Australia, but this is all we have here in North America as far as marsupials go. It's really, really interesting. If you look at their ears, one of my favorite things about them is their little crinkly ears. Look at those. Look how they crinkle. The little crinkly ears help them move through very thorny bushes to avoid predators. What would want to eat an animal like this? Well, that's very simple. Bobcat, mountain lion, coyote, wolf, grizzly bear, large birds of prey would love to take down smaller uh, opossums, and at this size, even a bald eagle could still eat poppy. So she's very low on the uh, ecosystem chains of things that want to eat her uh, are numerous above her. Now, another thing the Virginia opossum is well known for is playing dead. You see, that's how they're able to protect themselves from predators such as mountain lions or bobcats or bears or birds of prey. And what these animals will do is if they're startled, they'll actually secrete a foul smelling odor and remain motionless for a number of minutes. So imagine that I'm a possum and I'm looking around for the, the predators. And I'm, where's the predator at? Where's the predator at? <laughs> <laughs> and then I secrete a horrible smelling odor out of my hind end. That predator comes over, sniffs me and goes, whew. That thing's already dead. There's no way that I want to eat it. Now, that's an incredible way these animals stay safe, but you have to also remember that not all predators are actually affected by uh, the Virginia opossum. Some of them will still say, you know what? I'll take a crack at that. Now look right here. This animal's not only incredible an actor, but also very resilient. A Virginia opossum is even immune to some venomous snake uh, bites. Now these amazing little animals uh, can be found under rocks, logs, uh, in holes throughout the day because they're mainly nocturnal. Now I know what you're thinking, what am I doing out? Well, how is this animal awake? We're, we're shooting this in, in the daytime. Well, nocturnal doesn't mean that they sleep all day long. If you did, then a diurnal predator, which is an animal that moves around during the day, would just find you and eat you. Nocturnal means that these animals are more active and look for food at night. That's when they feel the most secure. Now, when I say food, they would forage on fruits, vegetables, but they also eat old, dead animals, carrion, 
things they find on the forest floor. In fact, that's why they're so good for our environment. They are the garbage of our forest, eating rotten and decaying vegetables, fruit, and meat all over the forest floor. Now, these animals have the most teeth per jaw size of any animal on planet Earth. Look at that mouth. They have so many teeth in there, they're holding the mammal world record for most teeth in one small space. Now, their teeth are very sharp, used for ripping and tearing their food. But also, their claws are very sharp too. Look at these things. Can you see that? Very, very sharp claws. Now, they don't use their claws so much for, uh, they don't use their claws so much for ripping and tearing as they do for digging, foraging, and moving up the trees when they're younger. But their claws do naturally wear down as they age. Going back to how important these animals are for the environment, I know growing up here in Texas, everyone's seeing a possum and go, ew, gross, creepy, it's a large rat. No, these animals are super cool and super important for our environment. You have nothing to fear from them. They don't carry any diseases. They are not vectors of rabies. However, if you do own horses, there are some diseases they can transfer to horses that could be very fatal. So you have to watch out for that. These animals are very, very unique to our continent here in North America, and they deserve to be protected. Now, although she only has a three-year life expectancy, Poppy has touched the lives of so many people, and possums in your backyard are a very good barometer for how your ecosystem is doing all around you. I hope that if you see an opossum in your backyard, you're thankful that you have these creatures calling your home their home. Now, some ways to avoid inviting too much wildlife into your house if you don't like that. If you have cats that live outside, I wouldn't leave cat food just sitting outside. That is something that this animal who scavenges and forages would find and chew up and eat because it's an easy meal. So try to avoid leaving just food for animals laying out overnight. Also, if you have bird feeders, try to put them where they're hanging so these animals at this size can't get to that bird feeder and feed off of uh, what you're trying to give to other wildlife. That's ways to keep animals like Poppy out of your backyard, but also make it safe for every other species that's calling your home their home. Now, as the sun is setting, this is the time the opossum comes out to eat. Now, we talked about earlier the garbage of the forest, but poppy is also really important for the environment here. If you hate ticks, you'll love a Virginia opossum. You see, every season, these animals are responsible for eating up to 5,000 ticks. It's one of the best things these animals do for our environment. In fact, 95% of all ticks that they encounter, they consume. Makes these animals incredible for the environment. The sun has set, the moon is joining us. It is time for the opossum to take its place in our environment and our ecosystem. Remember, these animals eat ticks. They clean up the forest. They might look creepy, but they're fantastic for our environment. If you see any wildlife that maybe has uh, found its way into a place or a part of your house that it shouldn't, please call a uh, wildlife removal company that can help take them and release them back into the natural environment. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of The Wild Side. Be sure to leave any questions about the Virginia opossum in the comments below. And please subscribe right here on YouTube. If you subscribe to, to YouTube, we can uh, grow our followers and tell everyone how awesome these incredible marsupials are. Thank you so much, everyone. Remember, conservation rules, stay wild, and we'll see you next week when we highlight yet another of your favorite species.